Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. What did we open? Well, pretty nice rare. Lobstruck Beast is uh, definitely one of the nice adventure creatures in the set. Make a 1-1 one, one for 1 mana, make a 5-5. Five, five. And it's not too difficult to get some other 1-1s one, in case the first one dies. So the 5-5 five, five can keep attacking, and just a 5-5 five, five on defense is quite good too. So that's likely going to be my pick, but let's take a look at the rest of the pack. Hypnotic Sprite is also pretty awesome as a counter spell that then gives you a 2-1 flyer afterwards and can always just play the flyer right away if you want to. Next up we've got Sir Kara. I'm gonna go with the bold 5 mana 3-3. Three, three. When Sir Kara or an instant or sorcery spell we control deals damage to a player, exile top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. It's pretty good. And then of course it can also ping the opponent to enable the first ability, so this seems like a pretty awesome card to provide both card advantage and a way to deal a bit of evasive damage. Then we also have got uh, Flax and Intruder. This card's okay, but it's a little awkward that the adventure costs 7 mana and then the creature is 1 mana. You would much rather have it the other way around, where you can still like play the cheap adventure and then an expensive creature afterwards. Kind of like the Lovestruck Beast. Having it the other way around is a little awkward, because if you want to play the adventure first, then the 1 mana 1-2 one, on turn 7 or 8 is not going to be too impactful. But uh, it's nice to have the flexibility of casting the creature as well. So you should basically evaluate this as a 7 mana, make 3, 2-2 two, two tokens. That's an adventure for all the adventure synergies. And then it also has the splits mode of casting it as a 1-2 a creature first if you somehow need to. Yeah, the, the 7 mana adventure is good if you have a, an adventure synergy deck outside of those decks. Maybe you have some token synergies or go wide synergies. But overall, it's not the most exciting card. 7 mana for 3 2 2 tokens is a bit overcosted. So it's definitely more of a synergy card. Then we've got the Ardenvale Paladin, which is okay if you're heavy white. Ritual, if you go white and make some tokens. So Tiny is decent removal, especially in the mill decks. The Griffin, a nice flyer for the blue red deck. Eye Collector is also more of a synergy card for the mill decks. The Wicked Guardian is okay if you've got enough 3 toughness. I think this is probably at its best in uh, blue-black and in green-black, where you have a lot of cards like Curious Spare that you don't mind dealing too damage to. The Errant for some aggro night tech. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the Lovestruck Beasts. The next best card is probably the Hypnotic Sprite. And then uh, Sir Kara is also pretty close, so all those cards are quite good. But uh, yeah, let's take the beast, see if we can maybe build a sweet green adventure deck. Alright, alright, this pack is pretty stacked too. Bake into a pie, probably the best common in the set. Just efficient removal, that makes a food token as well for all the food synergies. Green black is also a solid archetype with a lot of food synergies. So that might just be my pick, but let's take a look at the rest here. Sage of the Falls, 5 mana 2, 5. When a sage or another non-human enters the battlefield under our control, we can draw a card if we do discard a card. So this is great for the draw 2 deck, and also just in general to help you loot. Elite Headhunter has got some sacrifice synergies. If you can reliably make food tokens to sacrifice, then the Headhunter could be quite good. Uh, Savvy Hunter is also quite good. 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. Sack 2 foods to draw a card is kind of the main thing we should be looking at. When Savvy Hunter attacks or blocks make food is also great, but it's only gonna matter if you can play the Hunter early and the opponent doesn't have any blockers or removal out. So the Savvy Hunter is definitely close with the Bake into a Pie, I'm not sure which one's better. Then we've got the Princess, which is pretty bad, Charm Sleep is good removal, and nothing else that really stands out. The Foreboding Fruit would also be a good addition if we do end up in some sort of black food-related deck. And a Ginger Brood if we're somewhat more aggressive. Like, the fact that this is a food creature or a food like artifact and uh, counts for all the food synergies is nice but you probably still want to be somewhat aggressive to make use of the 1-1 one, one body that can get an evasive damage but you might still play this in a more controlling food deck if you just care about food i think it's between bacon to a pie and savvy hunter the nice thing about bacon to a pie is that it's 
a single color card. So if we somehow have to abandon the Lovestruck Beast and move out of green, I can still play Bake into a Pie in another black deck. Let's say we end up in blue-black, for example. Whereas a Savvy Hunter means I'm kind of locked into black-green. And I think Bake into a Pie might just be better than Savvy Hunter anyway. So I think I'm going to take the removal spell here. This seems like a pretty decent card, 5 mana, 4, 5. Whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. So you can only draw one card at the most, but drawing one extra card per turn is quite good. And uh, it's pretty easy for a non-human creature to deal combat damage to a player, especially if we do have some built-in evasion. Think uh, the Ginger Brute, for example. And then the Keeper of Fables also counts itself, so if it deals damage to the opponent, it also draws cards. So this card is quite good. I'm also a fan of Forever Young in the grindy black decks as a way to get back some creatures in the late game. The Witch's Oven could allow for some synergies, but I'm probably not going to take it over the Keeper. The Tempting Witch could also be a win condition for a food deck. Uh, Searing Barrage, also a very good card in general. But uh, I don't see a reason to take it over a Keeper if we're trying to play green. So... Definitely a lot of options, but I think I like the Keeper of Fables here. Alright, and green-black seems to be relatively open, although so is blue, with another Hypnotic Sprite. It's definitely pretty late. Fourth pick, Hypnotic Sprite. We've got a Cauldron's Gifts, which can basically reanimate a creature from our graveyard. So that's okay if we've got some nice creatures to get back, which, you know, a Lovestruck Beast and a Keeper of Fables are two pretty decent creatures, so the gift could be okay. Um, the Wicked Guardian is a nice pickup. We have some creatures that play well with it already. And Green Black in general is gonna have some nice high toughness creatures for us. Memory Theft would be a great sideboard card. And we are playing best of three. So it's between these three, or we can speculate on the Hypnotic Sprite if we think we should move into blue. And Hypnotic Sprite is the best card in the pack, I think. I also have a pretty good incentive to stay black just because we have more food synergies. We already have a bacon to a pie. Let's take the gift and try it out. Alright, I'm a pretty big fan of the Reaper of Night as a curve topper. It's also an adventure, so if we do pick up a Lucky Clover, we already have a Beast and a Reaper of Night. It's also a non-human for the Keeper of Fables, so if we can gain flying, we get to get in there and draw a card, which is pretty nice. So yeah, I think I'm down with the Reaper. The Giant Skewer can also be decent equipment as kind of a mana sink and potentially provide a bit of food. But we seem to be going a bit bigger. If we had a low curve and a lot of cheap creatures, then the skewer becomes a more interesting card. But since we already have a lot of pretty expensive cards, we're not too interested in the skewer. All right, not a Reaper might be excessive. This could be a fine pickup for the deck as well, Tempting Witch, making food, and then we can sack food to make the opponent lose three. Can give us a bit of reach. This is only combat damage, so the witch doesn't count if you use the ability. But a second Reaper might be overkill, I might get a second one at some point anyway. So, yeah, I'll take the witch. We are seeing a couple of blue cards, so it's possible we should be blue-black instead of green-black. But I'm gonna keep uh, our hopes up here for green at least a little bit longer. See another Reaper, another Cauldron's Gift, and a Curious Pair. I think the Curious Pair is okay if we need some more food synergies and just an early blocker. We don't have any two drops yet. And this is a pretty decent one if we need it. So I don't mind the Curious Pair here. And then if we find a few of those Wicked Guardians, they play well with the Curious Pair as well. Wow, eighth pick, Revenge of Ravens. This card is kind of busted. I definitely undervalued it after reading it the first time. Magic players tend to like look at 4 mana enchantments that don't affect the board and think, yeah, this card's not that amazing. In a similar vein of um, Ill-Gotten Inheritance, but after seeing this card in action a few times, you realize that it's pretty powerful, especially in a format with a lot of random 1-1 flyers floating around that don't do any damage with revenge in play. Yeah, let's take the revenge. So we wield the Flaxen Intruder. Another Curious Pair, so it's between these two. Like, I already have a decent amount of expensive cards, 
but if we do get there on adventure synergies and get a lucky clover or an innkeeper, then the intruder could be pretty decent. The curious pair would be another two drop. In one of our drafts we did, we didn't struggle to get more copies of curious pairs, so maybe I should just take the intruder with the idea that we can get more curious pairs later. But I do agree that our deck needs the Curious Pair more than it needs the Flexen Intruder. But I think I'm going to speculate on it, hoping we can get some more Adventure Synergies. And the Ginger Brute could be okay, it's both Food Synergy and it plays pretty well with the Keeper of Fables. Since this is not a human and can draw me cards, can easily become evasive. Fell the Pheasant would also be pretty good for the sideboard since we are playing best of three. But this would be a good main deck card, I think. So I'll try it. And get our Fell the Pheasants now. And Memory Theft, also a great sideboard option. And we even got the Skewer. Cabin could also make the deck. So, still not entirely sure where I should land on some of these lands that care about having uh, three basic lands in play of a certain type. They're usually okay if you don't have much going on at one mana. You can play it tapped, and then in the late game, it gives you a bit of value. Could see the Skewer being decent, plays quite well with the Ginger Brute if we need to get in some evasive damage. I think I'll take the Skewer for now, but Cabin could definitely make my deck if I picked one up. And alright, got a last pick Reaper, so black seems wide open. Uh, green maybe a little bit less so, but still we got a pretty late Flex and Intruder, Curious Spare, so it's not like green is completely cut off. Alright, I'm a big fan of Sir Conrad. This card can just totally dominate a game. It can threaten to mill the opponent out if uh, you've got some other ways to mill or get cards back from the graveyard and into your deck, like the uh, two mana sorcery. So Sir Conrad is quite good. Anything else worth pointing out? Scalding Cauldron if we need some cheap removal. Paladin can be playable, same with the black one. But yeah, nothing close to Sir Conrad. And here we could look at this Merrily for Rider as a decent two drop, especially in a deck that can make quite a few food tokens. Scalding Cauldron again could be fine. The Carriage can be a fine five drop, but we're already pretty loaded on the top end, so I don't think we need the Carriage. The Funeral has pretty clunky removal. The Carriage is pretty synergistic with the Lovestruck Beast, but I don't think we'll really be too desperate to find more 1-1 one, one creatures, since if the opponent uses a removal spell on our 1-1 one, one creature, then we're already kind of up a card, and then we can always like randomly play a Ginger Brute and then the beast gets to attack again. We don't have to put too much emphasis on finding more 1-1 one, one creatures, I don't think, and just having more good 2-drops is important, and the Rider fits the build perfectly here. Alright, well we're a food synergy deck, so Trail of Crumbs could be quite good. In terms of food generators, we've got Ginger Brute, the Skewer potentially, Curious Pear, we've got Tempting Witch, Bake into a Pie. So we already have a decent number of food generators, so I think Trail's gonna be the pick. Like, I wouldn't mind a Swordmaster, but it's not like we have a ton of knights, just a 2-1 lifelink with maybe a bit of adventure synergy. Let's just take the Trail. Here we could just take another Merrily Rider. Seems fine. Over fast the funeral, just to kind of lower the curve of the deck a little bit. I don't think our deck is like aggressive enough where we want a tracker, but the rider, while being a two mana three one, I kind of view it more as a two mana clunky removal spell potentially that can also attack and block. Lost Legion's okay. The double black mana cost is not always the easiest, so we don't always expect to play it on curve. We don't have any particular knight synergies, so it's just a 2-3 that's Christ 2, which, you know, is a good card, but I think the Rider has more potential in this deck, especially if we want to just pick up more food cards in general. Alright, well, the Witch Talker seems perfect. A nice beefy creature, also makes a food. This card would be good without a food token, but it somehow does make food too, so it's a nice bonus. Carriage again would be okay, another Curious Pair at this point is pretty good. And uh, yeah, okay, my adversary is also pretty busted. 4 mana 2-3 Death Touch, 
can sometimes only cost two mana, but that doesn't even matter. And then when it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So it forces the opponent to basically block it. It has death touch and two power, so if they try and double block it, then you get to kill two creatures. Yeah, green does seem pretty open in this direction. So pretty happy with the adversary. Now we're looking at Sporecap Spider to give us a bit more game against flyers, since our deck is kind of weak to flyers at the moment. I could take a Spectre Shriek for the sideboard. I think I would take Spider over a speculative Gingerbread Cabin, even though Cabin could be okay. But the Spider, even if we don't main deck it, is still also a serviceable sideboard card. So I think I like the Spider here. Like, our deck seems to be pretty good going into the late game with all these food synergies and powerful adventures. So we just need to make sure we don't die to a random flyer. And the spider can help us with that. Now it's close. Festive Funeral versus Second Spider. I don't think I need a Roving Keep when I have two Reaper of the Night already. So this is where we kind of look at our curve. Take inventory of how much removal we already have. So the Rider can kind of be used as removal. We have a Bake into a Pie. We've got a Revenge that makes it so the opponent can't really attack us with small creatures. Which is also kind of a removal effect in a way. So we don't have a ton of removal yet. But looking at our curve, we do have a lot of 4s and 5s. So Spider would not be bad. I think I'm still taking the Spider. Alright, we wield the Curious Pair. I think I'm pretty happy to main deck a second Curious Pair at least. Return to Nature for the sideboard would also be okay, but I think Curious Pair is actually pretty good for the main deck, so I'm gonna take the good main deck card over a potential sideboard card here. Alright, now we can take our Return to Nature if we want to. Again, probably don't need a second Intruder. Uh, Swordmaster seems less necessary now that I picked up double Curious Pair, double Merrily Frider. We've got some two drops already. And we don't have a ton of synergy with this. So it's between the memory theft and the return for the sideboard. I already have a memory theft, but there's definitely matchups where I wouldn't mind having two of them. But yeah, I think I'll take the return to nature. And now we can take the Lost Legion. Although I'm not sure if I'm playing it. Alright, and another Curious Pair. Pretty happy with that. And a Tempting Witch, so we seem to be in the right colors, that's for sure. And we opened a pretty nice one, actually two pretty nice ones. A Lucky Clover could potentially be busted in our deck. And Epic Downfall is amazing removal as well. Super efficient, can get rid of the opponent's bombs. So those are the two cards we need to choose from. So how much synergy do we have with the Lucky Clover? So it's good with the Intruder at 7 mana. The Reaper at 4 mana can make the opponent discard 4 cards, so basically their entire hand. Curious Pair makes two foods. The Beast can make two tokens. So it is pretty decent. Our deck could use a bit more removal. Clover is definitely the more exciting card. We'll take the downfall and if the stars align, we might wield a lucky Clover if we're lucky. All right, I'm seeing another Okam adversary and I'm not opposed to it. Probably don't need a third Reaper or second skewer, so yeah, seems like the only pick. Ooh, Edgewall Innkeeper. Say no more. Appetite would be reasonable too, as kind of a comma trick with a bit of food synergy, but uh, Innkeeper should be pretty good. And how about a nice adventure creature to go with it right away? Falmar Knights is perfect. Ooh, but a Lucky Clover too. Oh man, all these good cards. So we just picked up the Innkeeper, which wants us to have more adventure creatures. But we can probably pick up more other adventure creatures in this pack, other than the Falmar Knight, even though the Knight is quite good. Oh boy. Well, I guess now I wish I'd maybe taken the Knight, but I'm not complaining. Another Innkeeper's perfect. Another Revenge of Ravens, or another Reaper of Night, jeez. This deck is coming along nicely, Forever Young also a consideration. So we already have two Reaper of Knights, so probably don't need a third. Revenge is pretty busted, although looking at our curve I do have two Adversaries, a Witch Stalker, a Revenge and a Bake at four already, double Reapers, so our curve is quite clunky. Forever Young can recycle some of my creatures, 
The nice thing about the Flex and Intruder is if we do have two Innkeepers, I can just kind of use it as a cantrip for one mana if we need to hit our land drops, for example. So we've got that flexibility as well. So probably not playing Lost Legion, can start making some cuts. Not sure about the Cauldron's Gifts, might be unnecessary. I like most of the four drops. The Witch seems okay, can probably shave one spider. Don't know if we need the Skewer. But everything else seems okay. So we already have 25 cards here, so we're gonna struggle to make those last couple of cuts. Yeah, two Revenge of Ravens is quite good against some decks. Like, we gotta start thinking, how does this deck lose, since the power level is quite high? We don't have a ton of removal, so we could lose to some bombs. We're a bit soft to flying creatures, so that's where the, the spiders and the Revenge of Ravens come in handy. And then we could also lose to Mill, because we're not particularly aggressive and we're drawing a ton of cards. So those are kind of the, the angles of attack that our deck might be weak to. And which of these cards helps us solve that issue the most? Well, there's no real removal in this pack. I already have access to two spiders. Could be the Forever Young to help against Mill. So this one's close. I think it is between Forever Young and Ravens. I don't think I need a third Reaper. Alright, we'll take the Forever Young, help us against Mill. And nothing here that I'm too interested in. Don't think I need a Garenbrick Squire. We're not really looking to beat down, we're more of a value deck. Uh, could just take the Cabin for the mana base, could take Lash of Thorns as kind of a trick in some matchups I could see boarding this in. I'll just take the cabin. And then the Swordmaster looks okay. Cauldron could be okay too. Human Knight, so we've got like three knights in our deck. So yeah, the drain ability is not going to be huge. I could see taking the Cauldron just to help us out against some of those evasive creatures. And add a bit more removal to the deck. So can I make room for another Ginger Brute is a question since I do need to start making some cuts here. So this is a land, so we have 27 cards laid out. Assuming 17 lands at least, might even be an 18 land deck. Then I'm gonna have to make uh, four cuts. So those are gonna be pretty tough cuts. Could see shaving a Curious Pair. Although it is quite good with the Innkeeper and all the food synergies. Maybe it's better than Tempting Witch actually, now that I think about it. Since we don't really care about killing the opponent all that much but we do care about staying alive and having cheap adventure creatures and blockers. But one Tempting Witch could still be fine. We're a bit heavy on the four drops. So this is kind of how our actual curve looks like. Possible I should shave one Reaper, but it is very good with a Lucky Clover. Yeah, we should be careful because the Innkeeper is not a May ability. So there's a, a small chance we end up decking ourselves before we kill the opponent if we're not careful, but that's also where the Forever Young is pretty important to make sure we don't deck ourselves. With two Reapers, a Conrad, like, we've got ways to close out the game. Lucky Clover plus Intruder can definitely close out the game too. Given that it's so difficult to make these last cuts, I don't think I'm ever gonna play two Ginger Brutes is the point I'm trying to make. So I might as well take the Felda Pheasant for the sideboard. Um, don't think we'll need Roving Keep, but I also don't foresee Playing two skewers, have plenty of hate for flyers, so I'm not gonna need to play beanstalk just to give reach. So I guess I'll take the keep. Alright, so our deck came together nicely. And even get a memory theft or witch's cottage as our last pick. This is actually a real decision. So I appear to be pretty heavy green, so I'm probably gonna make room for the uh, gingerbread cabin, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough swamps for the cottage to be realistically turned on, but it is of course a very powerful effect, potentially even better than the cabin. But Memory Theft is a pretty great sideboard card against the same deck we're kind of playing ourselves, with a lot of these expensive clunky adventure creatures, so I could definitely see wanting a second copy in the sideboard. And we also have a decent chunk of one drops actually, so playing a tap land on turn one could be a drawback. Like the Curious Pair costs one mana to adventure, the Lovestruck Beast is one mana to adventure. So if you look at it, our deck has like a bunch of uh, a one drops. So playing at that plan turn one is actually a pretty big cost. So I think I'll take the theft, but it's definitely a close call. What is this? Last pick Revenge of Ravens? 
I don't actually know if we can play two in the main deck, but it's definitely a great sideboard card to have against uh, a bunch of 1-1 flyers. All right, so we've got most of our deck built. Need to make a few last difficult uh, cuts. So yeah, I don't think I'm main decking both revenges, but having it in the sideboard is a great tool to have. Uh, our late game looks okay. Two Reapers with the Innkeepers and the Lucky Clovers is going to be our main finisher. And then we've got some nice fives, some good fours. So I could see cutting the Ginger Brutes. I could see cutting the Tempting Witch. Those are some of the weaker cards. So the maybes here, Ginger Brutes, one Curious Pair, Tempting Witch. I think those are the more questionable cards at the moment. I do like the Intruder being both a 1-mana play and a 7-mana play to help us close as well. Great with Clover, great with Innkeeper. I think I'm going to want one Spider in the main deck, just because we kind of lack good early defensive cards that uh, block Flyers. I do have the Curious Pairs, so those block ground creatures quite well. Could see cutting the Scaldron as well. Yeah, I mean, I would like to main deck both Revenge of Ravens, it's just that I have so many 4-drops in this deck already. And in some matchups the, the Revenge is not going to shine, like against, let's say, a big green deck playing a bunch of 5-5s five and 6-6s. Six then the Revenge of Ravens is not super impactful. Against the mill deck it doesn't do much, against the more controlling decks. But uh, I think one main, one side is okay. 17 lands is probably okay, given how many cards I'm going to see with the Innkeeper. So probably don't need 18. The Clovers, like, not insane in our deck. I could have used some more adventures, but we still have the Curious Pair times two, at least. I'll have the Lovestroke Beast making an extra token. I'll have Reaper, that's a big one. If we can go turn two or three Clover into turn four, make my opponent discard four cards, that's pretty much game over. And then the Intruder is quite nice too, if we can make six bear tokens. So how about I cut the Tempting Witch, since I don't think that's how I'm going to win the game. And then just keep all the Curious Pairs, since those are more synergistic with the Innkeeper anyway. And then cut the Ginger Brute and the Cauldron. So I've got Downfall, Bacon to a Pie to kind of handle bombs. Can always make them discard them with the Reaper. I've got Sir Conrad, that can also be a back way win condition combined with my Forever Young, maybe. I've got the Riders also acting as removal, especially with Curious Pairs making cheap food tokens. And then I've got a lot of ways to draw extra cards between the Innkeeper, the Adversary, which can also just trade with any ground creature. The Keeper of Fables is not going to be amazing in our deck, but it plays well with the Reaper of Knights if it can gain flying. And uh, maybe if I make some bear tokens, they can connect with the Keeper. And it's also just a 5 mana 4-5 which is not the worst. So this seems like a pretty good starting point. And then we have a ton of sideboard options, which is also great. Double Memory Theft against the Adventure decks. I can bring in double Feldefessant against Big Flyers. Return to Nature if we need to blow up opposing artifacts or enchantments. Another Spore Cap Spider. And maybe a Cauldron against some decks as well. Of course, a Revenge against Small Flyers. So we have a lot of tools in the sideboard, which is great. We basically drafted like a 50 card deck. So we have a, a lot of flexibility in the sideboard. And then the mana base. I do want a lot of forests, but we do need double black at some point for some of our cards. Don't need a ton of black. So I could see going seven swamps, nine forests plus a cabin. Because I do really need green mana on turn one for the beast, the innkeeper, and a curious pair. And then seven swamps hopefully is enough to get us bacon to a pie when we need it and the Reaper at some point as well. All right, this looks good. All right, not a great opening hand. Um, five lands is a bit much, but our deck does use a lot of lands quite well in the late game. And we do have a lot of cheap cards we could draw in the meantime. So while not a great hand, it's probably still keepable. Like the Revenge of Ravens makes it so if we are up against an aggressive deck, we still stand a chance. All right. Another food deck. Ooh, we've got the combo of Forever Young and Sir Conrad. So this might be a game where I can actually afford to like aggressively activate Conrad. Well, 
Oh, that's a pretty good draw. And I wouldn't have been able to cast it last turn anyway, so... This is the earliest we could have cast the adversary. And there's no real point in playing the Revenge this turn, so I might as well just play the Rider. And I want to hang on to the Forever Young, because it plays so well with Sir Conrad. Alright, the Adversary is baked. That's also a good one. So I can adventure, make a beast, or I can play Sir Conrad. Adventure, make a beast seems kind of better. It's slightly less mana efficient, but I care less about the beast dying than Sir Conrad dying. And this brawl's a little bit better. Alright. So they don't have a great block on my beasts, so that can attack. And I guess I'll play Sir Conrad first, so if this rider ends up trading, we get to drain the opponent as well. And I'll probably keep Forest in hand, in case my opponent makes me discard two cards. Alright, that's a big tree folk. Now I can still attack into it with my 5 powered creatures. In fact, I can even send a 1 1 since my opponent's forced to block one of my 5 powered creatures. I have two creatures in the graveyard, so if I forever young, I get to drain my opponent for two as well. And then mill the rider, since I know that it's a creature for Sir Conrad. And I don't really mind milling the rider. Alright, now they're just dead. Alright, so up against the black green food. So this is a matchup where Revenge of Ravens does not seem great. So I don't mind taking it out, since the opponent's just going to win through very large creatures that can attack past the revenge. But memory theft seems good. The rider's not amazing against the curious pairs, so I could see shaving one. The spider also doesn't seem necessary. So the tempting witch could be okay. The cauldron's gift could be okay. Maybe over a Merrily rider. Don't want to slow the deck down too much, but... Don't expect to be facing a ton of flying creatures out of green-black. And uh, against a lot of opposing 1-3s, my 1-toughness attackers don't seem amazing. Yeah, this seems okay. Alright, uh, totally fine hand. Turn 1 Innkeeper, turn 2 Trail of Crumbs, turn 3 Memory Theft, or maybe Adversary even. Well, <laughs> that was pretty unfair. We have two of them in the deck, to be honest. Alright, well, that was a quick one. Alright, so this is not a super exciting hand. I just get to make some uh, food tokens, play some 1-3s, and then hope to draw my better cards. But we've got a lot of good cards in the deck, to be honest. So, I'll try it.
facing double planes, usually more aggressive deck. And uh, a 1-3 matches up quite well against a 2-1 uh, first strike. I'm super happy if my opponent spends their turn on a combat trick since we've got a second curious spare. Lovestruck Beast also decent, but I think I'm just gonna reveal this and play it again. And then next turn I can reveal Beast and play it. Alright, Wondermare. That's a good one. So yeah, I think we're just gonna stick to the plan here. Five five Garen Brick Paladin. I'm totally fine if that trades for my beast since we have a Forever Young anyway. Um, so now we've got an interesting decision. I could play Keeper of Fables. This is not a human. And then even attack with the beast. And then I give my opponent the option of double blocking it with the Wander Mare and the Youthful Knight. Or trading it for the Paladin. I don't think my opponent's gonna let me draw a card. So am I happy trading beast for Wander Mare and Youthful Knight? I think I am considering that the Wander Mare is at the very least going to be a 4-4 and a 2-1 first strike is kind of blocking my uh, Mare Leaf Rider. My opponent goes for the 1-for-1 one one trade, which is also fine. Alright, going all in with the Tall as a Beanstalk. So, yeah, we don't have much removal, so we'll just need to draw lots of blockers to try and get rid of those creatures from the opponent. They did not attack. What are my options? I can Forever Young back the Beast, and then still reveal and play it. Have a 5-5 five five and play, that's okay. The Rider's not really doing much. Yeah, I guess that's my play here. So we're just setting up some blockers and then hopefully we can draw our good late game cards like the Reaper to make them discard, although they'll probably be empty handed. Still missing double black, so can't bake into a pie if I draw it, but there's a Reaper. Well, that's a uh, pretty good timing. They might have a combat trick in hand, they might have some expensive cards. Looks like Tactician tapping two things down. So... And a rally, alright, so we did not make him discard anything. Yeah, at least we forced the issue. So we've got a spider to block the tactician. Wonder Mare's gonna become a 5 5. And then I'm just a swamp away from playing my own Reaper. Although I guess this has reach and first strike, so we can't attack past the knight. So we definitely have a board stall here. And we'll see who can break the board stall first. But our deck should be happy in a board stall since we've got those powerful late game tools. The rider doesn't really do much with the first striker on defense. And I'm probably fine playing out my land. In case I somehow need to sack some food tokens. No good attacks. I'm still at 20, so even if they do deal with the Spore Cap, it's going to take a while for the opponent to kill me. Although the Rack is going to slowly power up this Tactician. Still going to take two turns before they actually get to attack with it. Alright, Forest is definitely our worst draw. Fair enough. Mm, 
All right, now we're under a bit of pressure. This tactician represents quite a bit of damage. I guess I have the trail of crumbs, so no, I should not I should not sack my food yet. Well, if we keep drawing forests, we're definitely gonna lose. So I've got uh, one forest in the deck and a cabin. The rest are swamps, not that the reaper really gets to attack. So I would not really want to draw swamps. Not a reaper. Point had a line in hand. So, Pwn is definitely ahead now. I need to find removal for the tactician, but I don't have double black to cast my bake into a pie. Now I can play Reaper, but uh, it's not gonna really attack into the youthful knights. This is a three turn clock. Although I can always sack the food to gain a bit more life. Right, I guess that makes the food. So still hoping for like a trail of crumbs would be pretty good with all these food tokens in play. Possible I should have kept the Reaper in case I drew Innkeeper just to Dig me a bit deeper. I could sack a food to force the Youthful Knight to block the Rider instead of the Reapers to get an 8 damage. And that would draw me one card with the Keeper of Fables, so that's also a play we can consider. And yeah, I think I might make that play since I'm kind of desperate to find some action. So sack a food. And then do I have enough blockers back so I don't die? Should be fine. Epic downfall. Well, exile target creature with convert mana cost 3 or greater. That does exile the tactician, so... That's pretty good. It doesn't get rid of the Youthful Knight, but I guess not dying is good. Still have the two food tokens, so I'm virtually at 10 life. So they might use a weapon rack on the Knight of the Keep as well. Never mind. Opponent has two cards in hand, this is only sorcery speed. So they could have another trick, although they've already used double squires, so how many more combat tricks can they have? I would of course like to get rid of the Youthful Knight, since it blocks my Reapers. And if they do have a combat trick for the Youthful Knight, it's unlikely that it's gonna kill both of my creatures. So I think this is fine. I get to keep my Keeper of Fables. So maybe the Reapers get to attack and draw more cards. Sure. Ooh, Flax and Intruder. It's not bad. So I'll start by attacking with the Reapers. Nah, that's good too, so... Adventure... I think it might be better to keep up some food tokens as opposed to tapping out in case my opponent has a Fairy Guide Mother and gives this Wondermare flying. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna play the Intruder, keep up two foods. Alright, and we got there. 
That was close. So green-white, pretty aggressive adventure deck. So an extra spore cap spider could be good. Might be better than Fell the Pheasant since this is pretty narrow and only kills flyers, whereas this just blocks ground creatures just fine. Um, so I don't mind an extra spore cap spider. Revenge is okay, not amazing, since their creatures do tend to get pretty big. Revenge is better the smaller the opponent's creatures are. So one might be okay, but I don't think I need the second one. Uh, Marrow Leaf Rider is not amazing. They have a bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens and a first striker, so I could see cutting it. And do we need memory thefts? They do have a few adventure creatures, so it's not the worst. I could bring in one Fell the Pheasants. Could bring in the Scalding Cauldron. Yeah, that might be fine, just a bit more removal. They're playing green too, so the adversary is going to be great. Yeah, this seems fine. Yeah, the sand seems quite good. Got Innkeeper and Curious Pair. Draw some cards. I guess I'll play the Innkeeper. And then I have the flexibility of just casting the Curious Pair as a 1-3. Alright, Flutter Fox makes me happy. I have this Spore Cap Spider. And Intruders, interesting. So I could make a food with a Curious Pair and then just cast the, the Flexen Intruder as a 1 2 if I think I'm never going to get to 7 mana. Or I could just play Pair as a 1 3. That's probably okay. I cut some of the food synergies from the deck, so it's less important to make the token. I just want to have a blocker for the Fox right away. And then I want to probably play the spider on turn 3, so I'm not going to have time to mess around with uh, the food token. So let's do that. Because with all the cards I'm drawing, I'm realistically going to get to 7 mana with the intruder. And then I'm probably going to be happy to have the adventure. So I don't want to just play this as a 1-drop. Happy to trade for their combat trick, so then they don't have their trick when I play Spider. And a Curious Pair already drew me a card. Cauldron's good too, but just gonna play Spider here. Alright, trapped in a tower. It's a good answer to my spider and gives fox flying to. Trail of Crumbs is a nice late game card too. So Revenge of Ravens is looking good here with my opponent having two two powered creatures in play. I could play Cauldron kill fox, but might as well keep it and just play the Revenge for now. Alright, Weapon Rack, so that's perfect. If they put the counter on the Flutter Fox, Cauldron still kills it, and my opponent will have wasted a counter. No blocks. And I'm just gonna do this now. And I guess I'll attack. The Talza Beanstalk definitely makes the revenge less effective. But soon I'll be able to make a bunch of blockers. Ooh, Lucky Clover into Intruder would be the dream. The sequencing is a little awkward here. Because if I want to play Trail, Sack of Food, then I won't have the mana if I pay the one for trail to also play the Lucky Clover, so then I wouldn't be able to curve into Intruder, unless I get lucky and top deck a land naturally. But yeah, I'm just gonna play trail, play Clover, and then we'll see. Like, I can chum block with Innkeeper if I have to. Of course, I would prefer not to. So they didn't show me any combat tricks that would give like five extra power out of nowhere. So I think I'm okay taking six since we'll have a lot of chum blockers soon. Plus I could always sack the food to gain three. 
All right, that could be scary. Ah, let's untap and hope for land. Ah, that's not bad either. I get to make a ton of food. Let's uh, make two foods. And I really want to hit my land drop. So I could either play pair or I could activate the trail. And I'm going to want to gain some life anyway so I don't die. So I guess I'll start by sacking a food. Since that digs me deeper towards the land. Beast is good too. Beast makes infinite chum blockers. So how greedy do we get? We still have two reapers in the deck we can draw. We've got all the food and the trail going. Six bears is infinite too. So yeah, I'll just take the land here. Don't want to risk falling too far behind. And then just play a land curious pair. Summit 8, I can chum block with a Curious Spare pretty easily. So hopefully that's enough to keep me alive. Take 6, seems fine. So I'm not dead to a plus 2 effect would have to be plus three. So I think it's safe to adventure this. And hope I'm not dead. And then next turn I get to start sacking food to gain some life. opponent is a 10 as well, so they're also pretty close to dead. So I'm definitely going to need to start sacking some foods. So I guess I'll start there. Alright. Well, opponent conceded. Hopefully, draw. But I won. Alright, so I'm going to assume my opponent just conceded and something weird happened. I could attack over the course of two turns and probably kill them. And uh, with two food tokens in play, helping me dig deeper, I think we would have been fine. Probably means they just conceded. Alright, 2-0 so far, let's keep it up. Alright, on the draw. Yeah, the sense okay. We've got the Curious Pair plus the Riders that kind of act as removal. Two lands is not that many, but we're on the draw, so we can probably draw more. So Witching Well makes it less likely that we're up against a green deck, so my uh, adversary is probably going to cost 4 mana this time around. Blue-white. And white does tend to make some tokens, which is good against my rider. Don't mind forcing the issue on the cauldron, because if they cauldron my rider then maybe they don't have it for my adversary. It's gonna pass a turn. Alright, hopefully they don't have the instant that makes a couple of 1-1 tokens. I'm just gonna attack here and we'll find out. Alright, they will use a cauldron. If they were gonna use that anyway, they pro should probably just main phase it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, playing Rider seems okay. Right, that's a good blocker for the rider. So presumably they didn't have that last turn, otherwise they probably just play that instead. But adversary can attack into it, so that's good. So just hoping for land. Forest would be preferred. I could cycle this forever young to try and hit my land drops. Doesn't sound bad, like I have a lot of late game tools already and I don't care about getting back rider. So 
So we'll still be okay if we can draw land next turn, but if we miss again, we start falling a bit too far behind. Queen of Ice to tap down the Rider, that's fine. All right, that's good. I've got a few options. Can also make the opponent discard with a Reaper, but I think I would rather wait until they sacrifice a Witching Well. They're likely to still have two cards in hand at some points. So opponent's likely to play the Queen of Ice since that matches up well against adversary, which means they're not sacking the Well. But if they're not playing anything else, they'll still have two cards for me to discard with a Reaper potentially. So take two. Opponent's gonna hang on to five cards, probably planning to sack the Witching Well at the very least, maybe hanging on to a Counterspell too. Either way, I think I can start by attacking. I guess it could be a combo trick, but I don't trade the adversary for Monitor and a trick, which is still fine. Yeah, opponent takes it. I get to draw a card, so that seems like a good deal. It's either they have a counterspell or their plan is to sack the Witching Well in case playing Innkeeper is fine. Yeah, I'll play Innkeeper. I'll make him make him show the counterspell. Do want to play my own game as well? All right, that worked out. I get to draw a card on cast and not on enters the battlefield. So even if they counter the pair, I still get to draw my card. Hit my land drops, which is important here. But now we've got multiple card draw engines in play. We're hitting our land drops, which is good. The Reaper can maybe still make my opponent discard. So we're doing okay. Playing Reaper would have been, I think, a little worse in the face of a counterspell. And with the Witching Well as well, they could just, if they don't have a counterspell, sag the Witching Well, draw two cards. And then they would have gotten the choice of which cards to discard to the Reaper. It's always better when the opponent only has two cards in hand, so you don't give them the, the choice of what to discard, of course. So that's also reason why Reaper would have been slightly less effective there, I think. And now do I sack my food? Like, mana efficiency is definitely important. Food tokens do have value if I find a Trail of Crumbs, and of course I have a Marileaf Rider in play too. But uh, I think one can probably be sacrificed for some life, in case I end up falling behind against some flying creatures. All right, that's a great draw. So what I could do now is bake into a pie the queen, force my opponent to trade squire for rider, and then the adversary either eats monitor or draws me a card. That sounds pretty good. I guess a pair can attack too. All right, Pun lets me draw a card, because this is the outcome I prefer. Perfect, play another Curious Pair, draw a card. And a Beast is a good card too, so things are coming together nicely. And Tome Raider doesn't do anything in the face of Revenge of Ravens. So I've got access to 7 mana. On the board, the adversary has a good attack. So I could start there and see what happens. My opponent might just chum block, but that's fine. Alright, just a chump. Works for me. I could reveal beasts, play beasts. I could just play beast and play 4-drop, like Reaper of Knights. And the Innkeeper is the 1-1 that lets the beast attack. So which one would I rather have countered? I guess the beast itself. I would rather make my opponent discard too at this point. So let's play the beasts as just a 5-5 five five here. Alright, they don't seem to have any counter spells, so...
opponent discards planes and linden. Fair enough. And giant killer. All right, that's pretty good. So now they get access to a tapper. That can maybe tap down my adversary. Arcan too, that's good too. Protection from white's not too relevant. But we still have a lot of good tools in hand. My opponent's empty-handed. Trading adversary for any of these two creatures would be good in my book. So I can start by attacking. And then I have the option of just playing a Reaper. I could make some bears with the intruder. Although the bears don't line up great if they still have a giant killer in play. I could play my Revenge of Ravens to start gaining some life. I've got some options. So pay one. Alright, more food. So given that they took the damage, I think I just want to minimize the damage I take, which means playing revenge. And then I can still sack a food as well. And I'm going to hold on to the intruder for the adventure. Alright, opponent gets their opt back. Works for me. Don't think the Pathlighter is attacking, but maybe the Arcan is. Alright, never mind. So opponent's basically trading one damage for one damage with the Pathlighter, which in their spot could still be reasonable, but I certainly don't mind. I imagine the Giant Killer taps down the Adversary now, and then I'll still have... 9 mana total, which is enough to play Reaper or Intruder Adventure and then play the Intruder afterwards as well. So what's better here, a bunch of 2-2s two or a 4-5? I think the 4-5 flyer is going to be better for us. So let's start by attacking. But now the Curious Pairs get to attack. Get in for 1. Right, back up Reaper. I'm at 14, so feels like we're in pretty good shape, but of course anything could still happen. What's my best draw at this point? Probably something to deal with the Flyers. Opt into Opt. Into another Opt. Alright, how deep can we go? And Mirror Mate. Alright, that copies my Revenge of Ravens. Fair enough. Can copy opposing enchantments as well. Now I do have some like beefy creatures in the Reaper that can attack for quite a lot. So the Curious Pairs will no longer be attacking, but the Reaper might. And now the Intruder also doesn't look great. So let's move to combat first and see what my opponent wants to do. I would be happy attacking with the Reaper. Get stamped down. So do I want to attack with Adversary? Lose one life to potentially draw a card? I don't think I do. Every life point matters with a Revenge in play. So given that I'm probably not going to adventure the intruder, should I just play it as a 1-2 then? So what card am I looking for at this point? I guess uh, Sir Conrad would help me close out the game. Although I've already used the Forever Young. I've got the Spider to block. So I think I should draw here. Gotta be somewhat careful that I don't deck myself. Can probably keep the innkeeper in hand since it's not attacking and I might need to sack the food. Opponent's got 16 cards left. I have 12 cards left. Innkeeper's not a May ability, so I have to be careful there. So now the Pathlighter stays back. Take three. Now, sacking the food could be bad if I draw my Trail of Crumbs. 
And I've got basically all the mana in the world anyway, so I think I'll hang on to it. Alright, Lucky Clover. Doesn't do a whole lot anymore. I guess I can play Keeper first. This is also not a May ability, so definitely gotta be careful not to deck myself. It's possible that playing Keeper was a mistake, but presumably if I draw my entire deck I can figure out a way to win. I'm not gonna play the Innkeeper. Opponent's at 5, so the Reaper is at 2 turn clock essentially. Castle Ardenville can make 1-1s, one not too relevant in the face of revenge. Opponent's gonna stay back, try and double block Reaper. Alright, let's untap. Curious pair. Hmm, so I've got 9 cards remaining. So how many lands do I have left? 11, 12, 13, 14... So I have three lands and nine, so I have six spells. One of them is a spider, one of them is an epic downfall. I've got a Sir Conrad, another adversary. The enchantment, the trail of crumbs, and then one more card. So the card that probably wins me the game is Sir Conrad. So it doesn't hurt to make a food here. Two foods thanks to the clover. I think I want to wait with attacking with Reaper until I find Sir Conrad, since if these trade, it ends up draining the opponent for a bunch. And I really need to be very careful with how I manage my resources here. I think I'll play the pair, draw a card. But I'm not going to play the Innkeeper. Alright, Trail. Should help me find what I need. So I don't think I want to dig aggressively now, since if I dig I won't be able to play Sir Conrad. So I'm just gonna say go and set up for a big attack next turn, basically. So milling is my only concern now. Life total is not gonna matter with all this food in play. But I do need to make sure I can kill my opponent before I deck. So the key here is the two Reapers plus Sir Conrad. Spider. Actually, it might have been a mistake to take Spider, because Spider on the bottom means I can potentially deal one with Sir Conrad still. So I don't think I should have taken Spider, actually. Alright, I'll we'll take Sir Conrad, so we know we have a creature in the deck still. So that was the last card that I uh, forgot about. Yeah, definitely should not have taken the spider. So there's the epic downfall. That should make things easier. So play Sir Conrad, hopefully resolves. Should not have tapped triple black there, but oh well. And then I can downfall one of the flyers. Probably the Archon. Move to combats. Reaper gets tapped down. It doesn't hurt to attack with the Keeper, so Reaper's attacking for sure. So I guess Keeper can attack too, it's just gonna get chum blocked, but might as well. Because then I drain with Conrad if they chum block. Opponent chumps the Reaper, sure. Opponent's at 5. Guess there's no real harm in playing the Spider, is there? Alright, so I've got 5 cards left. One's the Witch Stalker. That doesn't matter. 
No need to sack food quite yet. Not gonna mill with Sir Conrad. Right, let's go to combats. Don't think I should attack with Sir Conrad. All right. Bone down to two. So I don't think I can start activating Conrad because if I don't hit a creature from the opponent, I'm just dead. And I can always do it in response to, let's say, a removal spell. So play land, say go. Yeah, I guess I have six Conrad mills, so it's a pretty high chance that we find something because, of course, I can mill and then my opponent would die before I take a draw step, so I would still win. But I guess there's no reason to do it now. I might as well wait and see what my opponent uh, plays, because I might just win with Reaper by default, so there's no need to take the risk. Opponent does draw a flying chum blocker. So how does that change the equation? Maybe I should just like turbo mill with Conrad. And get seven activations. Yeah, let's just activate Conrad. So I've got to be careful how I tap my mana. Yeah, I guess I should do it end of turn and then on my upkeep and then I would actually mill my opponent and see their entire deck. So it is probably wrong for me to do it now. Eh, I don't think the information matters too much. But yeah, the correct play would be to probably just do it on the opponent's end step and then again on my upkeep. So that should be game. All right, so that was a pretty tricky game. So against blue whites, kind of flying opts, they can copy my Revenge of Raven. So do I even want it in the deck anymore? Maybe not. Could bring in Return to Nature. Fell the pheasant seems okay. How good is the rider? It doesn't seem amazing. Points got a lot of like one ones and one fours. So I can see cutting it. Definitely going to hang on to Forever Young instead of just playing it out in the early turns, but we just needed to hit our land drop there. Another Spider seems fine. Because yeah, if we had Forever Young in hand, I could activate Conrad much more uh, often. Maybe just bring in Cauldron over Fell the Pheasants, since their flyers seem to be pretty small and they would just die to the Cauldron anyway. And this is a bit more flexible. Um, yeah, I might just cut the Revenge, to be honest, because my opponent copying this is kind of annoying. Opponent does have a lot of 1-1s, but the 1-1s can't really attack me with all these good blockers. And my plan is to win with Reaper anyway. Yeah, I'll just cut it. And then I have room for a Fell the Pheasants, maybe. Sure. We'll try this. I've got a Keeper, I think. On the draw, plus Trail can help me hit my land drops too. So I do need to find land 3, but if I do, then the trail can find land 4, potentially. Alright, it's an innkeeper instead. So now I can sack the food and pay for the crumbs. Squire to get in some extra damage. Curious pair. So I could make a food or I can just cast it. I think I should just cast it to try and draw land here. Alright. I don't want to be forced to cycle the Forever Young since then we risk being in a spot where I don't have a way to prevent decking. So hopefully I draw land next turn. At least the Curious Pair can block the Knights. Alright. Curious Pair is trapped, I'll take two. Alright, there we go. 
Now I should probably just play Spider. No attacks. Opponent's gonna start making tokens with Castle Ardenvale. I can sack my food and pay to keep hitting my land drops. I can play the adversary now. It gets double blocked by Squire and a 1 1. But then the Cauldron can blow it up, so I guess adversary is fine. So they'll need to, like, block it with a lot of tokens if they want to try and kill it. The fact that they use Trapped in the Tower on my 1-3 is definitely good, since that's a premium removal spell. Here I can attack with my adversary, keep up Cauldron, as well as Bake into a Pie. Seems fine. And I'm happy if my opponent throws away their entire board to try and kill it. Or they can just trump it forever with tokens, but at some point we'll place their Conrad and then that's no longer gonna work. So we'll play him now. And if they kill or counter it, I can always get it back with Forever Young. And they're gonna exile my cauldron, fair enough. One one that I can block pretty easily. Fell the pheasant in case of a flyer. Eh, adversary can attack once again. I guess now I'll be forced to bake into a pie to blow up like a double or a triple block. Which, you know, using this is not ideal since it's a good removal spell, but I've got Epic Downfall and Fell in hand as well, so I don't really mind using one of them. Don't want to put uh, Sir Conrad in harm's way. Just a chum block, so we're making a little bit of progress here. And probably just say go, and of turn I can sack the food and dig with a trail of crumbs. Don't really need any of these in particular, but lands are good if I draw a Reaper at some point. And my opponent's gonna pack it in. Alright, so they didn't have a great game plan to beat our Blank Green Grindy deck. And after the first game, they've essentially seen our entire deck. So they came to the conclusion that it was in their best interest to just concede and move on. Yeah, with Conrad in play, I could definitely consider just milling since I had the Forever Young in play. Gotta be a little bit careful that I don't end up accidentally decking if they somehow counter my Forever Young. So always gotta play it safe, but uh, yeah. Like in the first game, I should have definitely try to see my opponent's entire deck with uh, Sir Conrad Mills so that I could maybe see if they had some counter spells in main deck. But uh, I guess we would have ended up killing them before we got to see their entire deck anyway. But uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind when playing best of three. The more information you can gain from the first game for the second and third games, the better. Because uh, information is everything. All right. Well, this hand is good against an opposing green deck, with Adversary coming down early. At the very least, I can play Intruder and Cantrip with Innkeeper, so I don't hate it. Attack for one. Nice. Shield breaker to one. Don't really want to trade the innkeeper for it, but I'll trade the intruder for it. Just to clear a path for the adversary and the witch stalker later, so they can double block as easily. I'll decline. Alright, trebuchet. 
does get around Revenge of Ravens in a way. But it's also an artifact, so if my intruder can ever connect, I guess I could kill it, but that's not going to happen as long as they have it on defense, I suppose. Yeah, I think I'll play the adversary. And hope we can connect with it. If I draw a swamp, bake into pie can also maybe blow up a double block. Alright, they are playing green, so the adversaries are going to be above average. Ogre Errant. Alright, and there's a swamp, perfect. So adversary would just trade for the Ogre Errant. So I could bake into pie the Ogre Errant and then attack. And then my opponent has a choice of double blocking, but I would be fine with that exchange, or letting me draw a card, which I'm also happy with that exchange. And wow, my opponent just packs it in, that's an early concession. But yeah, adversary, definitely a scary card if you can stop it. So against the red-green knights, I guess we can call it. Return could answer the trebuchet, don't expect many flying creatures. Revenge is going to be probably fine, but not, like, amazing. Green tends to have pretty large creatures, where the drain effect from Revenge is less relevant. But I could see keeping in one copy. Cauldron can also deal with their early creatures as well as the trebuchet, so maybe bring in the cauldron. Yeah, probably. Do I need a spore cap spider? I don't mind it as a 1-5, even if reach doesn't do much. Uh, riders might not be at their best, but they can still potentially trade up for larger creatures. So not sure what my cut should be here for the cauldron. Maybe it is a spider, maybe I can cut a mirror leaf rider. Let's shave a rider. I guess the cauldron's not great against her 2-1 that destroys artifacts, which we did see in the first game, one of the few cards we did see. And the rider kind of doubles up as removal if we do have the food, but it's not great if we don't have food and... Alright, this uh, draft is going quickly. That's for sure. So yeah, final boss. Alright, so on the draw, a reasonable start, but uh, we could end up flooding a little bit. Five lands is a bit much. Do have some expensive cards in the deck. Yeah, I'll try it. Alright, well, facing innkeeper is definitely scary. It's uh, fun to have it on your side, not so much when you're seeing it on the opposing side. Got one of those as well. So, some sort of mirror match. Although, that's a pretty good pickup. So, hopefully, the adversary can connect. Alright, opponent's blue green. And lots us on tap. Start by attacking. Might see a bounce spell. Alright, Carver for the trade. Fair enough. Let's play Beasts. So we're definitely behind here. The Innkeeper is a very good card. But uh, we could find one of our two innkeepers ourselves, and then we would be fine. Or just a removal spell. So 5-5 five, five gets in there. And I'm okay playing one Curious Pair. I might keep the other one in exile if it's not going to be attacking. Just um, in case I do draw Innkeeper to draw me more cards. We'll see. Alright, so they have our Innkeeper covered, potentially, and there we go. 
and could go innkeeper into curious pair. They kill my innkeeper, or they could play their 6 5. Probably need to keep intruder as a 7 drop, since we don't have much at the top end at the moment. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hang on to the intruder, even if I could maybe get a card out of it. And then next turn, the keeper, although I do have a lot of humans in play, sadly. So the keeper's not gonna draw me any cards. Gonna hang on to my food since we have a trail of crumbs in the deck. And Meryl Leaf Riders too. Speak of the devil. So if I play Rider, there's a chance my opponent prioritizes killing the Rider with the Cauldron. Otherwise my Rider kills their Innkeeper, and then maybe my Innkeeper gets to live. Yeah, play the Rider. Hang on to the Intruder still, since we're one land away from the Adventure. Opponent's gonna play it safe, and basically trade Innkeepers here, essentially. Unless I've got another answer for the rider lined up. Queen of Ice to tap it down, that'll do, so that buys him another turn to draw more cards, and the Queen of Ice is an adventure for the innkeepers, so yeah. That's a good one. Even attacking with the Tree Folk. Sadly, these aren't non-humans, otherwise the Fables would be pretty good here. It's not even clear if I'm supposed to kill the innkeeper, kill the tree folk. So I guess I'll start by attacking. And then I'm probably gonna end up uh, baking the tree folk. And I should probably do it now since I don't want this to get countered. All right, so opponent's gonna get at least one more turn of innkeeper card draw here. Alright, make that two more. So they have a definitely a very synergistic deck, so Cauldron is definitely coming in to answer the Innkeeper. And Squire. I didn't even think about this, Putin can attack with Innkeeper, so I definitely should have kept back a blocker. Whoops. Alright, mistakes were made. I guess I'll play second rider. And just say go for now. And then next turn I'll finally be able to kill the Innkeeper, hopefully they're out of adventures. Yeah, it's not an adventure. Discards a land. Fairy attacks. Take two. Alright, that's a good one too. So I didn't really get punished for not killing the innkeeper sooner. Since I didn't end up playing an adventure this turn, I guess the plan is Rider trades for Innkeeper and then I can make some bears. So this is the Rider that wants to be attacking. Alright, so we've got some blockers here. We're slowly dying to the animating fairy. And my opponent gets to draw a lot of extra cards with the sage. So they might end up decking here if they're not careful. So is this a human? It's a fairy. So it does draw cards with a keeper. So opponent basically gets to draw all the cards in the world here. They've been so doing so from the start and 
they're not slowing down. So I think milling the opponent is a realistic win condition at this point. So finding Sir Conrad is going to be pretty key. So in hindsight, killing the innkeeper might have actually been bad since that forces a draw. Eh, not our flyer, so now we're just dying to the flyers. Reaper can make him discard the last two cards. So the rider can kill this flyer at least. So that's probably happening. Alright, Fairy Vandal. And then another Tree Folk, so the Adventure discard effect is definitely coming in. Two Thunder Snappers, so they definitely have a very synergistic uh, deck here. It's gonna be hard to beat. Alright, Rider kills Pixie. Although, I guess the Vandal might actually be bigger than the, the Pixie. After a turn or two. Eh, it's killed uh, the Vandal, I guess. But I'm also just gonna die to these large creatures on the ground. So yeah, this game's kind of slipping away. At this point, Pwn still has 12 cards left. I don't think I can realistically deck them in time. Need to draw an answer for the Flyers first. And even the spore cap spider wouldn't really save me here by itself. I guess that uh, keeps me alive for a little bit longer. It's probably better than playing my own reaper. But I don't think this card is amazing against my opponent since they have so many beefy ground creatures, the double tree folk. So I think Ravens is coming out. A third tree folk, so yeah, they're going very big. The discard spell should be pretty good though. So seven cards remaining. Make that six. So we're getting kind of close to decking them. They've got basically four damage next turn with only the flyers. Let me just play Reaper. Yeah, maybe Conrad can still save me, but I don't have enough mana to play Conrad and activate him a bunch of times, so. They did not end up playing a ton more adventures, like just a tree folk, I think, since we killed the innkeeper. Alright, that'll kill me too. Appetite. Plus five, plus five. That's a good one to know about, at least. Their curve definitely goes pretty high. So the memory theft should be pretty effective. Revenge of Ravens not so much as we've discussed. So one, two of these. Then anything else. Fell the Pheasants could be kind of effective. I think I like the spider more. Pixie with two counters we can still block. Yeah, maybe Spider's actually better than Fell since this also blocks the ground creatures that are like 4-4s. Four I wanted to Cauldron for Innkeeper and the, the small flyers. What don't I like? Curious Pair is not really necessary. Can definitely shave one copy. Yeah, I could shave the Intruder. It's good with Innkeeper and maybe the Lucky Clover, but I don't think that's what this game is about. Making a few 2-2s two is not going to win the game. And then maybe I do shave one Merrily Rider. Since I've got the Cauldron as a more direct answer for the Innkeeper. Alright, we'll try this. 
So can I keep this? If I draw a swamp within the next two draw steps, then this hand is quite good. If I don't, then this hand is quite bad. This might be a mulligan. Don't have that many swamps in the deck, only seven I believe. So I'm not super likely to draw one. Alright, well this hand's got a plan. Eh, maybe it's still played Innkeeper. It's mostly that the 1-1 one -one would be able to attack in an opposing 1-1. One -one, if they have their own Innkeeper. Which they do. But I might have drawn a Curious Pair and wanted to play it on turn 2. So I think I should offer the trade just by, because my opponent has more adventure creatures than I do. Even though I do have a beast in hand. Sure. That's also a good one, but I think I want to get the beast out there. Yeah, I agree that it probably made more sense for them to tempt the token. So adversary versus Witch Stalker. What is my opponent likely to do next turn? Four mana. They could reveal the 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, make Queen of Ice 4-5, or Innkeeper 3-3. Three, three. And if they make Queen of 4-5, then the Witch Stalker doesn't attack into it. So I think I'm playing adversary, even though it's less mana efficient. And I think I'm supposed to hang on to the Forever Young, since it could easily come to decking, and then Forever Young is the best tool we can have. Another Innkeeper. So they might have the instant speed pump spell, giving plus three, which would mean the queen eats the Lovestruck beast, but then the adversary gets to connect. So that seems okay. Yep. Uh-oh, something else too. So tiny. That's annoying. Again, Forever Young bagged the beasts, but I don't really want to play it until I play my other Innkeeper, so I guess this turn I just go Innkeeper plus Witch Stalker. So yeah, I guess we're just drawing here, since we're out of action. Alright, now we've got some options. Can kill the innkeeper. Can kill the Keeper of Fables. The Rider is probably a better answer to the Innkeeper. 3-3 three, three Flyer should not be a huge issue since we brought in the Spore Camp Spiders too. Although I guess, let's see, Paladin is a human so it doesn't draw with the Keeper of Fables. So I, I suppose the Beast should attack and then maybe the Bacon to Pie can be a blowout. Don't think the Witch Stalker attacks unless I want to kill Fables before attacking. But then... They still have a reasonable double block on it. So I think I just send Beast for now. Hope they double block. Although killing the Innkeeper is pretty tempting too. Points taking it. I think I let them have a turn with the Innkeeper. And hopefully we won't regret it. Hope to leverage this bacon to a pie. Also, the bacon to pie can make an extra food, so the rider can force another creature to block it, so it's not inconceivable that I can kill my opponent next turn. Happy to see the paladin attack, it's not a non-human, so it doesn't draw with the fables. 
Alright, hard cast the tree folk. So let's see, can I kill my opponents? So I can bake the tree folk. Then I can force my opponent to block rider with innkeeper and keeper, leaving Queen of Ice as their only blocker. Attack with all, blocks the beasts, takes eight exactly. So I think they're dead. Alright, we redeemed ourselves after the first game where we made a few mistakes. So, it all comes down to the last one. So, any more changes? We didn't draw the memory thefts, but they would have been quite good that game. Yeah, the Rider as kind of a finisher, can't underestimate it, but generally speaking, I expect these games to be pretty ground stally. so a lot of creatures, so I don't expect the Rider to often kill my opponent like that, but still having one seems good. So yeah, I think we stick to the sideboard plan. The Spiders would have been fine that game too. And again we have a hand that could be good, but it's missing black mana. Now we are on the draw this time. And I have this adversary which, you know, could be quite good. I'm more tempted to keep this hand than I was the one in the previous game. So we don't have to memory theft turn 3 for it to be effective. I think I'll try it. Yeah, all the cheap cards in the deck are essentially green, so I'll be able to cast those. Sadly, opponent not playing a green spell early, so I can't play my adversary turn 2. Alright, Vandal I can block with the spider for the time being. So I get to curve spider into adversary at the very least. Well get to curve spider into adversary into keeper of fables and then at some point I'll get to memory theft kind of want to keep it until there's something in adventure land anyway and I don't think I'm blocking Queen of Ice also if they have the plus three combo trick the spider would die if I block Queen opponent stuck on three so adversary could be effective Unless they brought in counter spells. So tiny my adversary. I could have considered bringing in the disenchant, but I think so tiny was one of the few targets. So I can still block, this will be tapped, but that doesn't matter. Hopefully they don't have a blocker, so I get to go keeper and attack with my spore cap to draw a card. Let's go for it. Spider is not a human. I've learned that in uh, the early grades. So tiny my keeper, sure. Maybe made more sense to target the spider there. Unless they just care about the four power on the keeper, I guess. So our opponent's kind of struggling to hit their land drops here. Might be able to take advantage. Still no black mana though. So I guess now the queen has a good block on the keeper. Spider gets blocked by the vandal, so we don't have a great attack. But I get to Trail of Crumbs plus Clover, or Trail of Crumbs Sacrifice to find black mana. Which is probably better. Could 
could potentially find a swamp and then draw a swamp and cast Bacon to Pie next turn if I sag the food right now. Let's take the swamp. Although Cabin gets another trail activation, but I don't think I should be too greedy here. Just take the black mana. So drawing a Reaper would actually be quite devastating, since then I get to go Clover into Reaper, make him discard four cards. 3-3 three, three Paladin. Ho 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 ho. All right. Well, I'm feeling a lot better about our chances. All right, this memory theft can grab the tree folk, but we don't have to do it right away. And I just need a swamp before I can kill the paladin. All right, forest is not a great draw. Memory theft, I can wait at least one turn before I can cast that. So I guess I can cycle Forever Young and hope to find something useful. Sadly can't play the Reaper, so yeah, we're not doing much. Swamp. Alright, so next turn I'll be able to bake the Paladin and then I'll have another food for the trail as well, so that's good. And hold on to the Memory Thefts. Now if they go land into land and cast a tree folk, I might regret not casting the theft, but there's a good chance they'll be stuck with a card in hand and I get the two for one here. So I'll have to take another five, unless my opponent expects uh, foul play. Yeah, and it's a fine draw as well with the trail. Definitely gonna pie the paladin, and then I can still sack the food and go digging. I could like Curie Spare first and sack that food in case the thing I draw changes my play. I'm not sure what that would be. I guess it doesn't hurt to make some food. I also get to make two foods thanks to the Clover. Rider seems fine. Still just gonna bake the Paladin, I think. Alright, so... Not getting pressured. We've got the card draw engines in play, so... Things are going well, but my opponent could definitely draw out of it. Alright, so now... I need to seriously consider memory theft as well to grab the tree folk before they can cast it. I guess I'll take the beasts. The pair represents more food for the trail, but a 5 5 lines up pretty well on this board once I deal with. The uh, tree folk. And makes a bunch of tokens too. So reveal beasts. And then I might be better off just playing the beasts and playing the memory thefts instead of trying to get fancy with the rider because I have the cauldron anyway to blow up my uh, rider. So sketch your tree folk. And play the beasts. Alright, just the lands. Another memory theft, so this turn I could play Reaper 
for 7 mana and still play my Merrily Rider or sack food and take a look. But my opponent is somewhat likely to block the beast with a Queen of Ice and then use Cauldron to finish it off, which, you know, is a fine trade, I guess. Let's say the Keeper of Fables itself attacks, then they can block with a Queen and blow it up, so that seems bad. And see if they want to trade. They probably don't want to let me hit them, because otherwise the Keeper of Fables draws me a card. So expect a block plus a Cauldron. That works too. Happy to kill the Vandal, since that could be a scary card later. So now the Rider can trade for the Queen of Ice, potentially. And the Reaper can start hitting them, and also draws cards with the Keeper. 17 cards left, so I'm not afraid of decking anytime soon. So we're in a reasonable spot here. Points on empty. And the memory theft is likely getting saved until they reveal another adventure. Although that's just gonna delay the inevitable. And now I could memory theft the queen. Uh, they're just going to decide to replay it instead of uh, revealing it, Innkeeper. Start drawing some cards. I don't think I should downfall the Queen. Just send in everyone, basically. All right, and my opponent has to concede, so a pretty key Lucky Clover into Reaper, make him discard three cards, and they never really recovered from that. So, lost the first game, could have definitely played better, probably would have lost anyway, but uh, yeah, pretty clutch playing the second game with a Rider, and then kind of outvalued my opponent in the last one, so pretty clean 5-0. Did get some early concessions along the way, but hopefully the last game made up for it. All right, let's crack some packs. Return of the Wild Speaker. Should maybe try and build a deck around this at some point, maybe a go wide deck or a deck that can put uh, Regisaur in play. Pack one, pick one, what would be my pick? Ventures is, is interesting, like against a knight deck I can imagine this being quite devastating. Not sure if it's better than Bacon to a Pie, which is probably the other best card in the pack over Smasher. This one's close. Bake is like the more reliable card, the Vengeance potentially has higher upside, but Stone Coil Serpent, also very good, has a lot of text, don't forget it has reach, protection from multicolor can come up, and trample as well, so just a great mana sink in the late game, Covetous Urge we've played in the sealed was great too, and Drown on the Lock is fine if you're in blue-black, so pretty powerful pack. As a pack one pick one, Serpent is great because it's colorless as well, so you don't commit to any colors yet, so it would definitely take Serpent if this is the first pack in a draft. Eh, Castle Garenbrig, probably one of the weaker castles for draft. Rider and Dragon are both excellent in their respective colors. Alright, Yorvo. Definitely pretty powerful if you can be heavy green. Probably need at least like 10-11 forests before you can consider playing Yorvo consistently. Sir Alan also very good. And Trapped in the Tower, one of the premium removal spells in the set. Also, gotta watch out for those fairy guide mothers. And the Circle of Loyalty. 
maybe we should build a knight deck at some point as well. But uh, yeah, the circle's a great card in limited too, especially if you've got some knights. The Guide Mother, nice for aggressive decks, can free creatures from the Trapped in the Tower. Scorching Dragonfire, great removal in red. But we'll probably start with a circle. Alright, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.